Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Wednesday. We have a nine-game slate today. This week has been uh, kind in terms of having the schedules be pretty even throughout the week. So, nine games tonight to get to uh, discuss. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate it for the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out Twitter for updates. Check out Prize Picks if you wanted to sign up there. I post my picks on Twitter. On three or four yesterday on Prize Picks, and you can check out the site if you want to join us. Uh, yesterday, I hit on FanDuel, missed on DraftKings because uh, Anthony Edwards had ten fantasy points somehow. But uh, going ahead and looking at tonight's slate, looking at the point guard options as always to start. You have Luka Doncic. He's eleven six. There's no Porzingis again today. He's missed a lot of games this year with injuries. And he's missing another one today. It should be a very good spot for Luka to be able to just dominate this Thunder team that's also missing SGA. So, uh, only concern you have is probably a blowout. Otherwise, Luka should be able to dominate Thunder play. Not great defense. Their defense will get worse without SGA. You know, they have Dort, who's a decent defender. But in terms of just uh, turning the ball over and being in a solid game script, can't really ask much more for Luka. He has been showcasing his triple double ways having two in his last three games i think good chance he gets another one today james harden on a back-to-back -back, he played 37 minutes last night you know was okay fantasy wise only 46 it's not going to get it done at 11,000. struggled shooting probably wouldn't force him in you know on a back-to-back -back on the road i'd rather get up to luca for sure lebron's probably going to miss again he's doubtful he said he might miss some more games then you have John Moran going up against the Knicks. Not the best matchup for you know anybody going up against the Knicks. They play slow. They're still good defensively, even though they lose a lot of games. Kyrie's a fade at 10-1. Lamelo is going to be a fade for me at 95. Westbrook, I guess you could look to him, but uh, still a little bit of risk, as always, with Westbrook. In the 8K range, you have Levert, who is getting a lot of opportunity in terms of just dominating some of these games with usages. Hasn't been able to get it done. She had five turnovers last game, no defensive stats, missed out on a double-double. Also just slightly missed out on a triple-double if he got some more rebounds. He's going up against the Magic. He's $8,200. He's playable, but, you know, he hasn't been he hasn't been coming through. Although tonight it's a different spot going up against the Magic. I guess it's a better spot than he's had. Uh, I like Levert more than McCollum. I like Levert more than Fox if he does happen to suit up. Giddy is 79. He looks... Decent, but uh, that price tag is kind of a little bit expensive. I'd rather get to some of the other guys on the Thunder. Although I do think Josh Giddy can get a triple-double or at least a double-double today. He had another double-double last game without SGA, and that's something he typically will do with SGA not playing. Uh, other picks in the mid-range are definitely like Cole Anthony. Continues to produce for this bad Magics team. 45 fantasy points yesterday. He plays good minutes. Should be a good game to target. With uh, both teams shorthanded a little bit. Well, at least the Pacers are shorthanded. The Magic are pretty much at full strength. Uh, Dinwiddie, 58. Couldn't have had like a worse shooting night. 2 of 9. Started off the game 0 of 6. 0 of 4 from distance. You know, ended up flirting with a triple-double. He only played 31 minutes. I'm sure he's going to play again today on a back-to-back -back, uh, without Bradley Beal. Going up against the Sixers, a price tag is still enticing enough to where I will probably end up playing him just because he's still very cheap, and I know what he has the ability to do without uh, without Bradley Beal. Maybe people jump off of him, and he happens to uh, you know, have one of his normal games without Beal, which is like high 30s, 40s fantasy points. And then at the bottom, you know, Jalen Green for tournaments, I guess is okay. Melton for tournaments. Uh, and then the Jazz, you can look to like Clarkson without... Uh, you know, unfortunately, lost Ingles for the season with the torn ACL. And I do not think that Mitchell is going to play yet. He's still ruled out. Uh, so first guy I'm going to plug in is going to be Luka as superstar. Get up to him. Uh, shooting guard, not going to be looking at the top two guys. Brown, you could look to him, but 87 isn't super cheap. I'd rather maybe go to like Levert a little bit cheaper. Bain is tougher to get to, although he does give you some upside. But he looks better on FanDuel. Powell at only 63 going up against this bad Lakers defense right now. He looks appealing just because he plays big minutes and can get you rebounds. Also take a good amount of shots. Barton at 57. They haven't had to play him a lot of minutes recently because blowout, blowout. None of the starters played in the fourth quarter for the Nuggets yesterday, losing against Minnesota. Decent price tag still for Barton if you wanted to take a shot, but there are some 
other better plays. Now, I'm definitely looking to like Chetty Osman here at only $4,600. He's super affordable. They do not have Garland again today, so you're going to see heavy minutes for Chetty Osman. He had a double-double. I mean, almost had a double-double. Definitely should have had a double-double. He shot 18% from the floor, 3 of 16, 12 assists for him last game. Uh, he left a lot of fantasy points on the table, shooting 0 of 7 from distance. Uh, going up against Houston, better, way better matchup. I mean, Pelicans are a good matchup, but Houston is just the best matchup in the league right now. They play no defense. Half of their players are unmotivated, uh, just allowing players to score at will. So definitely looking at Chetty Osmond, maybe look at his number for double-double. Uh, small forward, not, I mean, not going to have LeBron. Tatum is expensive at 10-6. Looking in the mid-range a bit here. You know, Powell at 63 looks decent, going in the 5K range. Uh, I don't have much here. Maybe like, you can look at Kyle Anderson at 47. See what the price tag is on oh, Dort is 65. He still looks decent enough to consider playing him if you're not going to look to get to Giddy. In the value range, you have Bullock at 39. He's gonna con He continues to get some good minutes now that he's healthy because they don't have Tim Hardaway. So a lot more minutes to be had on the wing. And also Porzingis is out. Moving on to small forward, no Porzingis, going to open up some things in Dallas here, but uh, like Kyle Kuzma, get to a couple of these Wizards, at least one, and Kuzma has continued to just dominate without Bradley Beal. In terms of scoring the ball, it gets you a lot of rebounds as well, and going up against Philly, the Sixers have been on a roll, uh, so there is some risk there, but Kuzma is averaging 42 in just 29 minutes, and you'd expect him to play some more minutes uh, today and get some more usage in those minutes without Bradley Beal. So I really like the price tag on Kyle Kuzma, um, especially with Embiid playing. So that kind of hurts Tobias. Hurts uh, a Mobley 74 is decent, but the probably price rate should be. I think you could look to Kevin Love instead. Oh, he's 7K also, so he's not much better priced. But definitely look at Kyle Kuzma at 75. Other picks in the value range, you can look to like Royce O'Neal from the Jazz. They're going to need somebody else to step up. Um, and then all the way... At the bottom of the 3K range, you have like Denny Avdija just getting some decent minutes right now without Bradley Beal. Moving on to center, you have Jokic at 12-6. I'm sure he'll play today, uh, even though it's a back-to-back. -back. And he was questionable yesterday. Hopefully, he's able to suit up. Going up against a Jazz team that also might not have Hassan Whiteside, so you definitely could see Jokic just dominate the paint. That will be something to keep an eye on. Uh, in the mid range, you look. I'm looking at like Nurkic going up against this Lakers team. Definitely has success and definitely has upside there. Wendell Carter is still very cheap at sixty two hundred dollars. And then going further down in the four K range, you have uh, Montrez Harrell at forty four hundred dollars. He's gonna play more minutes today because they do not have Thomas Bryant, who is ruled out. The forty four hundred dollar price tag on him looks. Definitely looks appealing, and then you also will have Gafford. They probably could go back to what they did earlier in the season where they played Gafford. Um, and Montrez Harrell, he played just six minutes yesterday. But, you know, if he's in the starting lineup today, you can definitely look to his way. He's very affordable at that price tag. Uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in Isaiah Jackson. I don't know if... Well, I think they've already ruled out, like, Batadze... And you're not going to have Sabonis. I was still in protocols. But uh, you could have Brissett. And if he returns that, you know, if he returns any starting, then and Jackson's coming off the bench, then I wouldn't play him at 54. But assuming that Jackson continues to start because he has produced extremely well in the last couple of games, even in not even getting a ton of minutes, 46 fantasy points in just 29 minutes. Game before, he had 29 and just 18, 27, and 24. So he's a great per minute producer, gets you rebounds. And the matchup is solid. They're going to need some bigs out there against Orlando. And Jackson, even though he's only 20 years old, um, has really proven that he can handle handle some extra minutes. And even in those minutes, he's not even fouling crazy. Last game, he didn't have any fouls. He did have six fouls previously. So maybe they uh, actually does have some foul trouble. Hopefully that doesn't jump up today. Going up against, uh, moving over to the guard position. I'm going to plug in Dinwiddie again. He's only 58. I'm sure you know, he probably will get less ownership than yesterday. But the price tag went down by a little bit. And he just I just don't see him having that bad of a game again. So I do like Dinwiddie at 58. 
And then the last piece to plug in here is a guy that's min price. Uh, he was a big factor in the Suns a couple years ago. Definitely, definitely had some upside. Bounced around the league for a little bit, and now he's three thousand dollars, and that's Marquise Chris. He played extremely well. He played. He outplayed Kleber. He outplayed Dwight Powell. Uh, in just 19 minutes, he put up 32 fantasy points at six stocks. So he is known to get some like blocks and steals over his career. He can hit some shots. He does like to shoot threes. Not doesn't make a ton of them. But at 3,000, you're getting a guy with 10x upside going up against a poor Thunder team. Should get at least high teens, maybe even low 20s in minutes, depending just because just he played really well last game. And if he starts off the game playing well, I'm sure he'll get some extra run. So it leaves you with like 6k left for the other two spots. Definitely, we can still make changes throughout the day. I'm sure we'll get some news, but definitely like how it looks with Luca as your payup. Get great values with Chetty Osman, with um, definitely Chris Jackson, Dinwiddie are pretty affordable, and then Kuzma gives you 50 point upside, 55 point upside at 75. So that's it for DraftKings. Let's go over to Fanduel. All right, on Fanduel. The point guard picks, you're still looking at Luka for sure at 11-2. He's my favorite payup on the day um, right now. I think Jokic can get there if we get some news like that Whiteside is not going to play because they have nobody else to slow him down. But I would expect Luka to probably have a triple-double against the Thunder today. Uh, you have Westbrook, Lamelo at decent price tags. Um, not looking at Maxi at 74. Maybe some people will chase him, but Embiid is back, and that's going to take a ton of usage. Uh, I like Cole Anthony a little bit at 7K. You can maybe look to Terry Rozier at a decent price tag going up against his former team. Some revenge narrative there. Still like Dinwiddie, unfortunately, at 59. Uh, I definitely think you can look to Kevin Porter Jr. as well. And then like Clarkson, Conley, you're just going to have to do some more playmaking. And then at the bottom, yeah, like Trey Mann looks okay, but uh, Wiggins started. Definitely could look to Aaron Wiggins at 4,000. All right, shooting guard. You can play uh, Luca here if you wanted to. Uh, Levert, it's 76, so he's affordable on both sides. Uh, hopefully he has a big game soon because he's definitely due for a uh, some sort of a good game. Uh, Desmond Bain at only 64 looks appealing, but it's tough to pass up on 6,000 Josh Giddy. You also have $5,800 Jalen Brunson and $5,600 Lou Dort as some other solid options. And you can even look to like Jalen Suggs for tournaments. Um, and depending on some of the other news that we get, maybe like Jeremy Lamb as a GPP play or Jalen Green as a GPP play. Uh, small forward, in mid-range, looking at definitely like Desmond Bain at only 64. Lavert still looks good at 76. Kyle Kuzma looks great at 82. But uh, looking at some of these Thunder pieces, I feel most confident with Josh Giddy and Lou Dort to produce. And both guys are underpriced without SGA. I think I want to take advantage of of both of them uh, power forward looking in the mid-range for Kyle Kuzma at $8,200 think he's gonna be at least uh, one solid option to get to from Washington uh, he has played really well this year and he gets you rebounds he takes a lot of shots and he gets just a huge bump in usage without Bradley Beal as you would expect other picks are Wendell Carter at 67 Kevin Love is gonna get more usage and more shots off without Jair Scarland, they don't have very many other scores uh, when Garland is not playing because Chetty Osman likes to shoot, but I mean, I think Osman's still a good play on FanDuel. We didn't touch on him. He's 44, definitely looks like a good option, but Kevin Love is, you know, one of the only, like, real shooters that they have without Garland left because you, you don't want Rondo taking a ton of shots. Mobley is still very raw. He doesn't take a lot of jumpers. Um, Jared Allen just stands in the paint, so Kevin Love should be in the game and getting a lot of shots off. Jackson also looks good at 6000 Um Chris is priced up to 55 k so wouldn't look to him on FanDuel. You can look to, like, Baisley maybe or go down to, um, I guess, Dwight Powell is, like, 38. He looks okay, I guess. And then at center, Jokic looks great at 11-4. If you wanted to pay up for both Luka and Jokic, definitely can do that. You can go to Embiid also going up against this uh, Wizards team. I think him and uh, Harrell have had some beef in the past, so... You might want to take it to Montrezl Harrell uh, in the mid-range here. Kind of like Kevin Love at 62. I just think that they're going to need him out there, uh, especially just to shoot some ball and to get some more spacing on the offense. He did play over 30 minutes last game, which is like the first time in forever that he's played starter-level minutes, 33, even though he came off the bench. And without Garland, he should be able to produce and get some usage. 
So right now I like Kevin Love. You can make some updates and pivots throughout the day. Uh, but I feel like he definitely gives you at least 6x upside, upside in the 40s as well. And that's about it. I kind of do like this slate. Hopefully not too much changes uh, because I do enjoy getting to these Thunder pieces. I do want to get to Luka. I want to get to some of these Wizards guys. Hopefully they're less owned. And uh, that's about it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight, and I will see you all next time.